<laughs> Greg Wallace and John Tarone. It's so great to have you with us. What I love it, those clips. What does it feel like watching it 20 years? It's like looking at old holiday snaps to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right, isn't it? I mean, the funny thing, because we don't, we sort of see a series, but actually looking back at all the little bits and, look, one with age, things have changed, <laughs> things changed, but all the experiences and the smiles and the laughter and, you know, just it's encouraging and fun. You know, it is, it's great. It I'm, is lovely to watch you watch yourself back. Do you, do you ever watch yourself back, Greg? Uh, yeah, well, they said so in the papers. They said I watched every episode, which isn't true. I watched some to see which clothes work better and which ones. And which, what, what works better for you? Whatever rides me belly. Oh, you haven't yeah. got a belly. Whatever covers me belly up. No, but you, I want to know what the directors are all about when they say, could you do this, can you do that? So you watch back, because yeah. you, you, you want a better understanding of yeah. what so they let's do. Go, let's go way back then. When it first started, did you... Was it pitched to you? Did you have to audition for it? And had you go, did you guys know each other beforehand? Yeah, so we knew each other uh, in 1991. We met in a restaurant <laughs> called Sydney Street. Greg was a greengrocer, <laughs> and I wanted coriander with a root on it to make Thai food. Greg found it, he became the green grocer forever. So we've been, known each other for a really, really long time. Wow. Um, and then we were, I was pitched this programme, which was a reinvention of MasterChef, going around shopping centres, people bringing in plates of food and uh, us tasting them and seeing what they were like. And that was the original format. That's what was going to happen. Right. So when did it get changed to this competition? Well, then, then Greg came on and then it all sort of um, it just changed and moved on and moved on and moved on. Well, my on. agent said, get down to... There's this company called Shine. They're making a food programme. They're looking to see you. And they just said, tell me about food, which I did. And they said, right, we, we want, we're going to be remaking MasterChef. They said, we've got a chef. We want someone else. I said, who's the chef? They went, you won't know him. I went, who is it? He said, oh, he's an Australian bloke called John Tarot. They went, do you know him? I mean, he's been buying fruit and veg off me for about a decade. That's I know him really, really well, yeah. So they put us both together and we were comfortable with each other and consequently, <laughs> that was 20 years ago. So I suppose what's happened, because we knew each other so well, there's that sort of... We, we, we've got our own knowledge and there's a respect for that knowledge. Yeah. And, you know, being around... I mean, Greg has probably eaten in more restaurants in London than any person that I've ever met. I mean, he was eating out all the time when he was supplying fruit and veg. But there's that sort of great knowledge of food and love of food and sort of me being in the kitchens, that sort of... When that, that duo comes together, it just worked and it was great. And we have fun doing it. And it's the show itself has become bigger than both of you put together, really. It's got a, an entity of itself, but the show wouldn't be the show without you two, would it? Oh, that's very kind of you. It's true, though. It's very good. We've got a 20th birthday celebration coming up when John's running the kitchen and we've got black tie. We've got all the previous winners and finalists. Oh, nice. And they asked me to do a talk. Five minutes they gave me to prepare and I said, this was never about me and John. It was yeah. always about... You lot, and it was. It's always about the contestants. You think this show's like launch careers, launch businesses, probably responsible for a lot of jobs related to those businesses. It's, you know, it's probably altered the food scene, really. What, what changed, what, uh, what's evolved in terms of um, well, just the show itself, but also how has food evolved in the last 20 years? Well, I, I think very much so it, it's become egalitarian. Mm. You know, it's no longer just about having to dress up and go to yeah. a restaurant. You know, and now we're seeing the advent of, you know, whether it be fast food or whether it be, you know, chain restaurants, whatever. But actually, to go out and eat becomes a normal part of life. Um, to go and cook something at home becomes a normal part of life. But people are fascinated by food, by travel and by people. Mm. And realistically, those three things actually happen within MasterChef. You know, yeah, you've got people with personality, you've got food, which is ever-changing, and we travel, and those... The food, of course, is about people travelling the world and their own experiences. Yeah. But one, for me, one of the most wonderful things with MasterChef has been this sort of proud, pride of heritage. Britain is an extraordinary multicultural country, which is so lucky to go and eat the most amazing food from everywhere in the world. Mm. But people are coming in really proud of their heritage, saying, I, was, I grew up in Britain, yeah. but this is what we ate at home. I'm bringing the two together. Yeah. Or I'm bringing three things together. Multicultural, also multi-regional as well. So what you, you know, what you eat from generation to generation in Cornwall will be totally different for you in East Anglia, you know? Well, I, I love that about it. I was talking to... I've got Welsh mates, and they thought... Do you know what curry half and half is? No. Uh, no, because you're not Welsh. Oh, is it half chips, half curry? That's... It's half chips, half rice. With curry oh. sauce. And they, they, Welsh people think that's everywhere. But it, of course, and it isn't. It, no, no, everybody's got their Can own it, regional It sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> really, really Double nice. carbon curry sauce, what's not to like? So the 20th series is coming up. Obviously, there's been a lot of rumours whether or not this is the last one. We're really hoping it's not. And obviously, we want you to put these rumours to bed. With this, <laughs> is this going to be the last series? <laughs> Oh, Alison, stop it. Stop it. There's not April Fool's Day. There's not breaking any vases here. Don't even start on this one. 
Uh, but anyway, we are... You know, the, the great thing is, it is on BBC One. It's always on BBC One. It's on again tonight. There's a quarter-final night. Six extraordinary cooks going through, find it out. And then we're back on now for the next seven weeks. No. BBC One. And, of course, you can catch up on iPlayer. You should be a politician, though. He's not answering answer. the question. Uh, no, it's, no, it's definitely not the last one. I knew it would. Uh, exactly. Exactly. We're not doing an Anson deck. <laughs> the end of Saturday night. Take the, I mean, I know you don't do what you used to, but how's the, the fruit and veg scene must have been totally different to what it was like 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, when I, I first, when I first started, the only restaurants were posh ones. Yeah. And where the waiters used to make you feel uncomfortable. And we would all struggle to understand the wine list. But now... It's not like that anymore. It's a real open egalitarian scene, as John said. But also the explosion in fruit and veg. When I, when I was supplying restaurants with fruit and veg, vegetarians used to have to hide in basements in Soho. Yeah. Why? Because they were the only places that you could get veg only. Oh. Now, there is not a single restaurant that won't have at least two or three. And vegan. Ve yeah, yeah, veg and vegan dishes. An explosion in veg, which, which is which is great. But also, the other thing that massive, the really massive change, I think, also for MasterChef has been the advent of the internet. Because you can find how to do absolutely anything. And there was this guy, and he was doing we, this outside challenge in a tent, and he had ten sides of salmon to, to, to clean, and he got his hand with a rubber glove in his hand and started skinning the salmon with his hand wow. and took the skin off. I was like, how did you get that? He went, internet. There's all these little tips yeah. and tricks everywhere. So we're seeing people doing things. But, I mean, this series, like, even last night or on Wednesday night, we got Kaltasha, which is a, a dumpling. We've got panukos, which are this sort of like little disc. I mean, there's all sorts of amazing new food that we've never seen before. You're so, so right, because I, you know, I, love, I love cooking from a recipe book. But every now and again, I go, oh, I'm not sure how to do that. And for once again, I just get the computer or the phone out. And it's yeah. Yeah. Listen, lads, congratulations on the series. We've got it, Master Chef, tonight on the BBC One at 7.30pm. And then three sure. times next week and the next couple of weeks. It next won't few weeks. be the last series. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> not oh, exclusive.